Hello guys and welcome to another video! So today I'm bringing you my January reads slash like book recommendations. This video was actually meant to be a getting my life together video, however... <laughs> We all can see how that was going. Yesterday I didn't film anything else because I was so tired. I don't know why. I was so sleepy. I literally had the energy to do zero. So I didn't exercise. Okay guys, so it's a quarter to five. I had lunch obviously and I am just going to edit for a little while and then we will exercise. Guess what time it is and who isn't exercising? Correct, it was me. <laughs> it's a quarter to nine and I did not exercise. I got a bit distracted watching hot, Too Hot to Handle. Yeah, it was not going as planned. So I changed it and as I wanted to film this video anyway, I thought it would be a good idea to replace my getting my life together. Maybe one day, maybe one day we'll manage, but not now. I took notes in this little notebook about all the books I read in January and I'm going to be like giving you just like a little preview about each one and what I thought. So yeah, let's get started. And the first book I'm going to talk about is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Nugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So, this story is a fictional story about 1950s actress and basically this journalist Monique, she was like new to a company and she was not very known. And one day, and bear in mind, Evelyn hasn't talked to the press or given interviews in like 50 years. And randomly, her company, I think it was a magazine, I don't really remember, receives an email saying Evelyn wants an exclusive interview with Monique and everyone was like why? Why Monique? She is new, she is not like our top writer, why Monique? So she goes and meets Monique, meets Evelyn and basically Evelyn tells her that she wants to write, she wants Monique to write her biography and Monique is very surprised by this like why are you choosing me? Why me? Like, why, why now? And Evelyn basically just said, when I finish telling you my story, you will have all the answers you need. So they start writing a biography. So by the end of the book, we all find everything behind Evelyn's career and Evelyn's life and what was seen by the press and what actually happened. So this, is, this was a bittersweet book. I should say. It was not one of my favorites, if I had to rank it, would be probably a 7 out of 10. It's a story that keeps you, you always want to know more, you want to, you always want to keep reading and knowing what happens. The Yen is what holds the most power, like throughout the book you find out a lot of disturbing truths, I would say, but the end is where like the most impactful part of the book is. And to me, this was not a very happy book. So I usually like books that there is like, they are slow burn, the characters need to fight a little bit, but there's love and there's moments of happiness, of true happiness where everything is fine. And then there's struggles and then everything is fine again. And this is not quite what happens in this book. It's not that it doesn't happen, but that's not the focus of the book. Yeah, I would recommend. I think it's a fun book, entertaining and all of that. It's just heavy in a way. Next book is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. In this book, like this is the first note I have right here is this book was wow. And honestly, I think is one of the, my favorite books to till today. This is a story that starts with Lily meeting Ryle in like a random circumstance. They are in a rooftop with Lily's dad's funeral and Ryle was upset and he was just like destroying the rooftop and she was like, what the hell is he doing? And there's immediately a lot of attraction, but then Ryle is a neurosurgeon, so he's called to work and he has to leave. So they don't see each other for months. They meet again 
in another random circumstance and you just like Ryle like you're immediately like oh my god I love Ryle I want her to be with Ryle so yeah we fall in love with Ryle immediately however throughout the book is revealed the story of Lily's first love that story is revealed throughout the story in like Diaries she wrote here's where it gets confusing you're like oh my god I wanted to be with Ryle but at the same time I wish you would meet Atl find Atlas again and they would just be together as well so you're rooting for two characters you want her to be with you and there's this part of the book that I'm like I wish Atlas story was like a separate one there would be a separate book about her and Atlas story so then the story takes a huge turn and yep yeah, that's all I'm gonna say because I'm not spoiling it this story is something that makes it even more heavy and sad is because it is based on the writer's parents and it's based like all in a true story so it's a very controversial let me tell you that right away it's a very controversial story and you'll just understand why Lily does what she does and not only Lily but like you'll get what I mean if you read it but I think it is so well written we are able to put ourselves in her shoes we are able to understand her decisions and we are able to feel her doubt in her we are able to, to feel how she's feeling and understand it and understand her decisions and I think it opens our eyes for such important situations in life loved it, totally recommend 10 out of 10, cried and I think it was like I, I don't cry reading books usually so I loved it, 10 out of 10 then into a lighter one was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood and this story is about a grad student uh, I think she's doing her PhD don't get me wrong on that don't quote me on that because I'm not sure I don't remember very well <laughs> like it was very confusing all those terms I'm, I don't remember very well but I think she was a, she was taking her PhD or something like that but then it is the fake dating trope so she starts fake dating her PhD professor he's not a professor but it's like a professor in her university so they start to fake date and that's how I'm gonna start I don't want to spoil but it's very obvious how fake dating tropes work so this story is very very <laughs> it's very cute it's very lightweight it's attention grabbing at the same time one thing I didn't love about it though was that it was written in the third person and I don't usually love that because I just I just think it's confusing and it's less embracing like when it's written in the first person I think you can immediately put pretend you're the main character but that's the only point I didn't really love about this book next is The Crush by Penelope Ward this one is the brother's best friend show book so basically it's about Jace and Farrah and Jace is Farrah's older brother's best friend and she has a crush on him like since she's young she has a crush on him and then something terrible happens he goes he moves away and they don't see each other for years but then he moves back into their own town and goes to live with Farah and her brother she has a crush on him and he starts to has a crush on her they start getting together but then truths are revealed and he goes away again it starts in the present, goes back to the past, and then comes back to the present. All of the stories I'm talking about, except The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Nurgo, have a dual point of view, so you see he's in hers. And I personally really like that. I really like to see what both main characters are thinking. So this book, I liked it again. It was not one of my favorite books ever, but it was like lightweight, it was like it was attention grabbing. I liked reading it, so I would I would recommend definitely because it was just an easy book to keep reading. So the next book I'm going to talk about is To Love Jason Thorne by Ella Mait. This book is also like brother's best friend trope, but not at the same time. Like at the beginning it is, but then it stops being the focus. I really like this book because I like the normal person, celebrity 
type of look where <laughs> there is like a relationship. Jason, he moves to the house next to Olives and his family dynamic was not very good. So he spends most of his time in Olive's house and the first time they meet, Olive is immediately in love. He's always very cute with her, very nice, very attentive, so yeah. And then one day he has to move away and he goes to Los Angeles and becomes an actor and they lose all contact. Then years later, Olive writes a book and that book is being turned into a movie and who's going to be the main character? Jason. It also is fake dating trope. I really like this one so. The last book I read in January was The Truth About Heartbreak by B. Celeste and this book I really really like. This was also brother's best friend trope but it's not the main focus as well. This is about River and Everett. River is adopted by the James family and has a brother Oliver and she was a foster kid and then Everett is Oliver's best friend and he's basically part of the family when River goes to their house she like starts having a crush on Everett because he's really nice to her he understands her and he kind of sees through her so she starts having a crush on him and he always looks after her Everett isn't in a relationship for a long long time so it's a bit tough between them I really like this book it had a lot happening it was not something that was just like silly things and I felt like I always wanted to find something out this is it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you like this type of content and I if you do let me know in the comments down below don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep current with the videos I post Follow me on Instagram as well because I'm usually there as well. I don't know what I'm doing. And I'll see you in the next one.